We just had a terrific Xprize Pandemic Alliance jam session, joint action meeting uh, with two incredible thought leaders and innovators, uh, Dr. Rick Bright and Dr. Mark Smolinski. Uh, Rick Bright uh, is uh, currently on the Biden transition team COVID task force, and uh, Mark uh, is the president of Ending Pandemics. And uh, I just want to sort of synthesize our conversation, uh, maybe starting with uh, Rick. What are you seeing as the fierce urgency of now, and what might the global community, innovation community, and every individual start to think about in terms of uh, addressing the current pandemic and, and preventing the next one? Well, Daniel, thanks a lot. I, I, what the urgency of now is we're in the middle of the worst public health crisis we've seen probably in our lifetimes, and we're relying on too few people and too few solutions to try to get us through the pandemic. What I'm hearing a lot more is we need to develop and implement those tools to empower individuals to play a larger role in ending the pandemic, taking personal responsibility and enabling them to know what their role is in ending the crisis. And how do you see the the, the Biden task force and moving forward, the ability to empower individuals? And what are your, some of your favorite tools that exist today? And what would be on your wish list to help enable that going forward? Well, one of the emphasis or the high priorities in the Biden administration is um, focusing on reaching everyone across the country. So we want to make sure we have the tools and the communications, the messages and the messengers in every community to promote equity, equity and vaccine distribution, equity and testing, equity and opening our schools and keeping them open safer. So we want to make sure anything that any idea or solution that we're investing in or implementing is going to reach everyone across America, especially those hard to reach underserved populations. And we've learned so much about the disparities, uh, social determinants, how they played a role in the negative side of the pandemic, and it provides a bit of a lens to uh, address solutions uh, and prevention in the future. Um, Mark, you've been leading efforts for a long time on preventing pandemics and ending the next ones. Uh, what are some of your uh, top line elements, uh, lessons learned here and what we can do next? So for looking at how do we prevent the next pandemic, we really have to transform disease surveillance, you know, knowing that the majority of uh, outbreaks jump from animals to humans, we can no longer continue to take just a human centric lens uh, for disease surveillance, we need to integrate it, you know, with the animal kingdom, as well as thinking about all those environmental factors. Uh, that influence the ecosystems that both humans and animals interact with. So that to me is one of the most important changes that needs to occur is to really look at disease surveillance through this One Health lens. I couldn't agree with Rick more that we need to involve the individual in all of these countries across the globe because they are our eyes and ears. They're not only the most important people to help us think about early detection, they then provide that opportunity for immediate rapid response. So looking at that One Health approach, engaging directly with the communities, and then engaging with other communities that now technology gives us that ability to do, like crowdsourcing all the epidemiologists across the globe to speed up that verification. Uh, that will be a really important element to add to, to surveillance. And then lastly, you know, helping countries really work collaboratively with their neighbors is the safety net that we need that when an outbreak happens in some remote area of the world, not only will that be a challenge for that country, but working directly with their neighbors immediately to look at that threat and be aware of that threat uh, will help us think about how do we reduce spread uh, to becoming a pandemic. So certainly COVID has been a, a catalyst, you know, Sputnik set off the space age. In some ways, uh, COVID can catalyze a new health age. Maybe for both of you, starting with Rick, you know, we, we, what would you be in your, your vision? Let's say we have 2020 hindsight from 2020. We're going to jump forward to 2030. What might be possible and what might be your sort of imagined future state for uh, preventing pandemics, responding to them, and maybe um, with your lens on, on health and innovation, uh, where, we, where we could be if we all kind of work together? Well, that is something that um, I think that we are closer than most people might think if we just implement and integrate some of the tools we've already developed and innovation we've already developed over the last couple of decades, actually. But in 2020 or 2030, actually, um, to be able to implement what we're learning in digital healthcare, be able to implement what we're learning on, on wearable technologies, what be able to implement 
um, the, the rapid detection of disease and, and home-based diagnostic tests that we're developing today, I can see a future, maybe not even 10 years away, where individuals have wearables that can notify them when they're exposed to something. And we can have very rapid um, um, diagnostic systems or, or evaluation systems that can tell us it's something novel, something that's emerging. And that can tie into a global conversation about rapid integration of, of new vaccines or new um, therapeutics that need to be developed. And then we can also implement all the new technologies that we have for rapid production of vaccines and, and, and drugs and other diagnostics or other tools. And then my uh, biggest wish, the, the biggest gap I think we're seeing still is having all those tools and then administering them and getting them into the patient. There's such a gap still. It is more than a, the last mile um, between uh, a factory or a loading dock and an individual's arm or mouth or wherever we need to reach to administer that, that life-saving medicine. And not just in the United States, but around the world. So if we can close that gap with innovation to make sure that the things that we develop that can save your life are affordable, available, and accessible on demand so people can get those when they need them, I think we'll have a huge impact on saving lives whenever the next pathogen emerges from nature. Yeah, it's really this is super convergence. As you mentioned, a lot of these technologies are here. The, the future's already here, just not evenly distributed. And it's an opportunity to connect the dots, put them together, and especially at the policy and leadership level to, to make those rails bring it to the last mile to that arm. And as you mentioned on our longer jam, maybe you know the, the sequence is done. Um, 10 minutes later, you have, you have the sequence and the 3D printer in your home makes you a patch with the right messenger RNA to protect you, uh, or maybe uh, before anyone even jumps on the plane and spreads it around the world. Mark, what's maybe your 2020 vision? And, uh, and I'll close this section by asking what, for those folks listening, what they can do to help uh, now and, and, and downstream. I don't think it should take us 10 years, get the vision that we want, which is putting the public directly into public health. The opportunity exists now, the technology exists now. And you know, I hope within the next five years, uh, when everybody wakes up in the morning, in addition to having your cup of coffee and brushing your teeth, you do your quick health check-in. Because telling us that you're healthy is just as important as knowing whether you have any symptoms of illness. And I really see us very quickly having that ability on a map to see where symptoms are arising in any particular part of the globe within communities. Um, to help us say, hey, there's something not right going on here. But doing that in an active way, you know, we, we have a lot of efforts looking at big data, wearables, passive surveillance, if you will, that can add to the picture. But letting people directly be involved in something then gives you an opportunity to say, hey, here's what you can do. Have you got vaccinated? you know, give direct actions is really the future of public health and one that we can realize in a very short future. So by 2030, we fully expect that we can end pandemics per se, um, because we should be able to find outbreaks locally and take action so that a threat anywhere no longer has to become a threat everywhere. Spot on, I mean, even uh, to the point now, uh, it starts to the individual, but even our wearables today, Stanford recently published a report that, you know, your Fitbit or your smart watch can determine whether you have the flu or even asymptomatic coronavirus. And as we build sort of that Waze or Google Maps where we all become data donors, we can create that connection to the human and the individual in the last mile in the community, locally and then, and then globally. So um, Rick, any last thoughts on what what we can all do, uh, even if you're not in biomedicine or a data, data jockey or an epidemiologist, uh, and, and as we're thinking forward to the, to the Biden administration, um, uh, any sort of lessons that you'd want us all to take away? Well, I think we can all uh, do a better job at taking personal responsibility with the tools that we have today and, and showing compassion and showing that you care and, and understanding the value in following public health guidelines. The public health guidelines we have today are proactive in terms of how to prevent the spread of this coronavirus. Um, if we all washed our hands more frequently, improved our hygiene, we all wore a mask, we all social distance and, and followed those basic public health rules, 
you're providing a big help to saving lives. So it really doesn't take a fancy tool or technology or a vaccine or something that you can't afford. The ability to save lives is in the hand, your hands right now. And I think if we did that, we all came together and showed compassion and caring in our country and around the world, we can save a lot of lives. And that's what I'd like us to do today. Amen to that. It's all about personal uh, responsibility and collaboration and that we're all on uh, one spaceship Earth uh, and uh, have a responsibility to help each other. Um, so with that, that's part of the ethos of the XPRIZE Pandemic Alliance, to bring uh, folks together to help solve for our current challenges and future ones. Uh, I want to thank you both for your uh, leadership, uh, innovation, and uh, stewardship, and Godspeed uh, on, on the next part of our journey. Um, stay safe.